Stay tuned for Art Zone coming to you from the very cool Equinox Studios in Georgetown. Hello, hello. Hi there and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy and we are thrilled to be at Equinox Studios. This place is teeming with artists and we're going to get a tour in just a moment. But first, here's what's coming up. Batik artist Nicholas Saronka. If you look at my art, immediately it should bring a joy. Art on the Duwamish. The whole idea was that we wanted to bring people to see Seattle's only river. and music from Pocket Panda. All right, back to Equinox Studios and to founder, owner, and a man among men, Sam Farzano. Hi. Hi. Um, this place is so cool. So before we go touring, uh, could you kind of nutshell it for us? What is this? Why did you want to do it? What happens here? Well, In a questions. nutshell. Big questions, yeah. uh, little shells. Um, Equinox is an amazing, spectacular community of now about a hundred different artists and mm -hmm. artisans mm -hmm. doing everything from blacksmithing and metalwork to woodwork, painting, photography, glass, ceramics, all kinds of other and things. And why did you want to do this? Because I'm crazy. No, mm -hmm. um, because uh, <laughs> there's crazy. not enough space. Um, wow. And it, it's finding a place for artists to thrive in an atmosphere of cross-pollination and collaboration and co-inspiration. and. Yeah. Perspiration and the whole thing, all everything, all the shuns, shuns, <laughs> all the shuns. Yes. Well, I think that's a, that's a basic um, overview, and now we're going to go through and see some stuff um, and kind of poke in in the little nooks and crannies. So, are you ready nice. to get your tour on? I'm ready. Let's do Let's it. Do it. It's time to tour. Here we go. Oh. The Blue Building. All right. This is the original building. Opened. In what? 2006. 2006. Okay, so what happens here? Well, the building's kind of two main levels. This is the more industrial, the level where people make a lot of noise and set shit on fire. <laughs> Upstairs is a little more refined. The painting, photography, glass, ceramics, uh, a little more woodwork, some public sculpture like installation stuff, mm -hmm. uh, leather work. All that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, so, so we got blacksmithing and stuff down here? Yes, okay. blacksmithing, woodworking, metal fab. We got people that make crazy bikes and mopeds that, you know. That actually work, right? Yes, right. actually, yes, not like mine. They look like um, really Wonka kind of a thing. You yes. Know? Yeah. And is everyone kind of working together, or is there a lot of cross-pollination going on in a way? There is. It's, uh, I mean, this whole building is about that putting people in the space where they can trip over each other and come together and cross-pollinate and mm -hmm. co-inspire. Um, there is a lot of that. You know, the woodworkers are making frames for the painters to mm -hmm. paint on. The metal workers are doing parts for the woodworkers. The, you know, there's all this different great synergy between people. Yeah, because of the, the whole space. vision of what you got going. Yeah. All right, well, I think we've kind of covered this building. So I think we're gonna go on to the next one, which is the most recent. Uh, yes. Okay. The okay. living room building. Across the street. Right across the street. Shall we? I'm in. I'm after you. I love the history of this building, so <laughs> give us the details. Uh, well, this is a classic uh, slumlord owned wonder of detritus and yuck. Uh -huh. uh, we, we had an uh, illegal pot growing operation, an African American motorcycle club a donut factory, a uh, commissary kitchen for taco trucks, which we affectionately called the poison taco, <laughs> and uh, a fish processor who would dump their fish ice out on the, the lawn. So you, in the summer, oh, on a great day, you'd get the fish ice, the donuts, and the, and the, the poison, poison taco, taco <laughs> sludge in the dumpster. It was awesome. So what have you done? We've basically redone the entire inside of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, our last piece is the living room, which is going to be our cafe, bar, restaurant. 
I um, love that. The place for everybody to come together and meet. Get their and coffee and, and their little snacks. And yeah. right now it has plywood on it because someone <laughs> drove through it. Yes, a, a, a love, a love, love struck, a love struck young person uh, backed up his car yeah. and went through. Oh yes. well, well, went now, right through the door. Love will do that. It does it. Um, hey, and also I, we didn't say this earlier, but all the artists are, are have bought into it, correct? Well, they not by bringing extra money or anything else, but just by paying their rent. Every artist uh, gets stock in the corporation corporation that okay. owns all of this. Yeah. Um, so they build equity and they are in it. They are my partners long term. Their voice matters. <laughs> Gabriel. So now we're going to go over to music land. The the annex. The annex. Calling. Okay, yes. let's go. Over here. I'm of course. Sorry. I'm following you. All right. Now we're heading to the music land, but tell me about these containers. Well, each one is a recycled shipping container and each one is a studio um, workspace. For people and we they're got. kind of scattered all over? Yes, we got five in this yard and 11 over on the other side. Wow, that's efficient. And yes. what's this here? Obviously, metal. Metal shop. Hi. Patrick, the proprietor, Colin. And Colin. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you guys. And then here. Stuff. Music. Ah, uh -huh, music land. It is music land. And how did this thing come about? Uh, well, originally this band, uh, Jacob Bain and Publish the Quest, this is his band. Uh, we're in a rehearsal space that we had a little closet over in the other building, 300 yeah. square feet. And they're like, they have tons of people in their band. Uh, and the trombonist was like hitting the drummer in the head and all this kind of stuff. So we, uh, when we were, had the opportunity to lease half of this building, mm -hmm. uh, we took it because we could build out this uh, Big space. space where he could, the whole band could play in real time, real space. Yeah. Um, and he's going to build a recording studio up mm -hmm. here that we're in process. Mm -hmm. And we've got another space next door with three other bands. Three All right, bands. well this is really groovy and I think our next stop is our last stop, which is the big huge warehouse, shall we? Yes, I'm in. Follow me. Okay. All right, the newest build out here. And by the way, you own that, right? That thing? Yes, the old Sawdust Collection Tower. And I'm going to build my office right in the top there, spin around like a space needle. Oh, perfect. Rule, rule the world. Rule the world. Yeah, All yeah. right, and here we are. And this who's is this? Our, this is Campbell. And Campbell, would you mind singing for us? He's a singer. Just, just a little something. Let's hear it. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, the Equinox Studios is continuing to take over the world, getting bigger and bigger. So <laughs> this place, what, it's huge. What's going on here? Uh, this is all going to be additional artists and artists in space. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got about 25,000 square feet of space, giant oh. corridor meandering down the middle. Yep. Uh, we're going to have four big spaces over here, two dance companies. Mm -hmm. We're going to have performance and rehearsal space. Um, we've got a painting school. We've got um, a bunch of different workspace ranging from 175 feet up to like 2,000 feet. And theater? A theater space in here? Soon. 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 Ah. We're, we're, I'm trying not to manifest the building across the street yet. But <laughs> okay. We'll soon. stay here for now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right here. Right. We're, this, this isn't theater enough for you? <laughs> I don't. Good point. Well, this really, uh, this is an amazing place that you have going here. It's very inspiring. Thank you. and. Um, obviously great for the community, for the artist community. So thank you for letting us invade You're and be here all day. We love being here. Um, and in fact, our band, uh, Pocket Panda, will be playing here. Uh, we have yes. a bit of setup for them to do. Uh, so in the meantime, we have a really nice piece on an artist here at Equinox, Nicholas Saranka. He is a Kenyan Maasai artist, and he's well known for his boutique paintings. So take a look. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. I am a Maasai who came from Kenya to try to share our culture. Two or three of my paintings portray singing. Singing is a way in which the Maasai stored information. We don't have a written alphabet, we have a tonal language, a language that goes in tune with each word. And uh, in creating a song, you told of an event, and a hundred years later, an individual will sing and know what happened in a certain place to a certain individual, why, and whether it will happen again, 
in the event that you did A, B, or C. If you look at my art, immediately it should bring a joy. The circumstances in my painting touch on your day-to-day -day life. So it's just sharing what I have and enjoying what you have so that we understand each other better. In order to be able to be a good illustrator, you have to picture the story from the point of view of the one listening. Am I clearly weaving the words in such a way that the listener doesn't get confused, but the listener enjoys and it touches the heart of the listener? The painting that I'm working on now, two men meet and they have this conversation. And in the end they say, okay, go in peace and I pray that you find your children laughing. Because when children are happy, then you have reason to celebrate. Batik is an art form where you alternate between the use of hot wax and cold water fabric dyes. So everywhere now I'm applying wax, there is no dye that will touch that space. It will remain white up to the end of the painting. Okay, so now, what is white inside the painting? Society is the ingredient from which we create art. What inspires me to do each painting is I think about a circumstance or a situation and I relate it to my environment. And that draws me to say, what can I say in relation to my culture that touches on that circumstance? Salt helps the, the dye to fix itself on the fabric. In all of us, there is something red that flows. And that is life. The blood in you is life. And so red must be a celebration of life. In our upbringing, we had a nanny after dinner. Everybody would sit next to her and say, tell me a story. And she would tell you a story that had a moral lesson. So that the next day as you go out, you always relate to the story. But as an artist, when I was told a story, I could picture circumstances. The painting with the lion and the warriors killing that lion is a story I was told when I was 10 years old by a man who actually participated in the hunting of a lion that had been coming and killing their cows. And uh, he articulated it so clearly I felt I was there. And so today when I paint, I don't need to be told this is how the lion was or this is how the fellow was. No. I just bring back that memory and uh, represent it on the canvas. So storytelling and words, all this come together into one embodiment of a word which is called love. If I can nourish people with words to touch another life and make it better, then I will have fulfilled the purpose for which God put me on this earth. And if I can do that, I can be happy and the world can be happier. Nicholas has a show at Tobiah Art Gallery through November, and you can order his book, Feed Me With Words, through his website, sarankamasai.com. Hey, as promised, it is Pocket Panda. Hi, Pocket Panda. Hey. And doing? this is Eric Herbig, and Eric is the founder. He's the founder of the band. That is correct, yes. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got a really interesting story, which we talked a bit about earlier. I'm going to get a truncated version after you introduce the people, Sh your peeps. Surely, I, I would love to. I'll start on this side. Uh, so we have Anna Steinle here. She sings and plays a synthesizer. We have Jordan Cunningham, plays guitar, does also some singing. We nice. have Mike Waller, plays keyboards, and glockenspiel. And a hat? Great hat. And a great hat. <laughs> and behind here? Uh, we have Mark Ribera. Um, he plays drums. Nice. And then we have Chris Allen, who plays bass. He also does a little singing. Great. That's well, it's nice. really great to have you all here. Oh, you know, I'll mention we have two others that... Uh, aren't here. Aren't here. Right. Um, David Cho, he's a violinist. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this guy named Chet, uh, mm -hmm. he plays saxophone. Excellent. So, yes. of course, they're on your record, and they are usually going to be with you when you play live. Yeah. 
Typically. Typically. Okay. This is the this is the better. This is the, part this, of the group. this is the best part of the group. Um, so <laughs> what we were talking earlier. I love your kind of your 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 grow ups growing up story. Ballet. Mm. Early There's a on. A little bit of that. Went yeah. to piano. Yeah, yeah. Went to guitar. Yeah. Went to molecular biology. Yes. Okay. So how does the science that you, when you went, was that a master's that you got? Um, it's a doctorate degree. A doctorate, a doctorate? So how does that play into creating music? Or does it? Um, well, you know, I mean, that's, that's a good question. I, you know, I mean, I feel like they're both, I mean, if you're gonna be good at either, you need creativity, yep. um, you know, having some sort of like process. I feel like we kind of go about stuff a little scientifically, mm -hmm. like we'll try a couple different versions, mm -hmm. see what everybody thinks, so kind of. Be methodical like that, I yeah. think it kind of transfers over. Yeah. Um, and uh, so the name of the record that came out was in April? Like, uh, April right? Yes, yeah, and it, that's it's correct. called? Uh, this Arrangement of Molecules. This Arrangement of Molecules, <clears throat> which of course does reference a bit of science there. Yeah. yeah. I to get so the first song you're going to do is off the record, and it is called? It is actually not off the record. Oh, it's not off the record. I know. Is it, we is it new? A, is it brand new? Trick, uh, it is brand new. Oh, I love that. Yes, okay. We wanted to give you guys something new. Well, it's brand new. So what's the title? Um, it's called This House. This House. All right. So are you guys ready to play This House? I believe so. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Pocket Panda. Thank you.
pick up this arrangement of molecules at Sonic Boom Records and online at iTunes and catch Pocket Panda live at Columbia City Theater on Saturday, January 2nd, 2016. Want some more fun stuff? Here you go. Encaustic painter Tony Sherman pays tribute to the politicians, teachers, and social pioneers who, throughout history, have been labeled difficult women. His masterful use of paint and wax are as layered as the questions raised by his portraits. They're living on the walls at Winston Walker Fine Art through December 19th. Photographer Bootsy Holler has spent the last 10 years gathering images and insights about her place in Holler family history. Raised in Hamford, Washington, Bootsy carefully inserts her image into unearthed family snapshots, blurring datelines and generations. There's a special showing of Nuclear Family at Utina Event Space in South Lake Union, call for open hours through December 22nd. The Seattle Rep is making good on their promise to give the Leo K stage back to Jinx Monsoon after a smash hit last year with The Vaudevillians. Jinx Monsoon and Major Scales Unwrapped is, surprise surprise, an unconventional take on the holidays. Show will be running November 25th through December 13th. Jinx Monsoon might not be entertainment for the kids, but no question that barf, snot and gas are fair game. Based on the popular book Grossology, the impolite science of the human body continues through January 3rd at the Pacific Science Center. Yes, human bodies are chock full of vestigial organs and Town Hall has one too, a huge pipe organ sitting dormant behind the main stage. Scholar in resident Brandon Davis presents a musical, biological and historical exploration of unused instruments among us December 7th at Town Hall. And last but not least, plan on some exercise for your unused instrument with the return of the Great Figgy Pudding Caroling Competition December 4th in Westlake Park. My name is Tabasco Mills. I'm a blacksmith and I own the blacksmith shop and manage the Iron Monkey Arts. I basically am able to create anything that somebody wants out of steel. I want to be known as somebody who does something that is hand done. I'm very much in the mentality of the artisan and the craftsman. I use a lot of the same techniques that blacksmiths have always used. I use a hammer, I use an anvil, I twist metal, I use a forge, and I play with steel that is hot enough to shape any way I want it to go. If you go into Italy or France or Germany and you see that really, really old metal work on fences or railings or balconies, that's the type of stuff that I do. More about endurance and finesse and learning how to move your body and not mess up your body. <laughs> I get along with metal. I know how it works and I know how to do things with it and I'm really happy when I get something that looks the way I want it to look. You can have a spoon or you could have a million dollar spoon and I like to shoot for the million dollar spoon. I like to make things really normal, really beautiful. Now I get to go home and go, oh, I had a really good day. I don't have to do anything else now. <laughs> Follow Tabasco Mills through the blacksmith shop or Iron Monkeys. Hey, one other person who is making a great use of a space here is artist Nicole Kissler. Hi there. Hi. Um, and you are, of course, one of the co-creators of Duwamish Revealed. Yes, with Sarah Cabbage. With Sarah, and it couldn't be her day because she was closing on a deal. Yep. Um, but what I, what I want you to do, and it's hard because this is such a gigantic project, mm -hmm. but if you can kind of 
and concisely tell us what is Duwamish Revealed, kind of what's it about? Right, so Duwamish Revealed, I mean, the whole idea was that we wanted to bring people to see Seattle's only river. Yes. Um, and we feel like the arts is a great way to do that. So we put together a whole summer long festival with um, over 40 artists that were doing art installations and events mm -hmm. along the river. And then we also created three cultural celebrations um, in the summer. So we had the first canoe landing on the river in 25 years, oh which was gosh. really exciting. Wow. Um, and the whole idea was to create a cultural movement around caring for our river, and we hope that's something that other people, you know, keep continuing on. Kind of pick past it up. This. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's two more, at this point, there's two more uh, kind of events or installations that people can experience. Mm -hmm. So run over those for me. So there's a few things that are still up. Ben Zamora has a piece um, that's at 12th and Elm Grove in South Park. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Alone, Standing in the Middle of Darkness Invisible. And it's a mirrored installation with a light piece inside it. It's gorgeous. Okay. Um, and there's also a piece called the Duwamish Lighthouse that's by George Lee that's out at the end of Jack Block Park. Mm. Um, and I'm working on an, a projection right now um, that will be at Lafarge Concrete Plant along West Marginal Way. Mm -hmm. um, and that is a projection of old growth trees at scale. So we think the West Seattle Bridge is pretty tall and it's about 150 feet. Yeah. And there are old growth trees in the Duwamish Valley that were 300 feet, so oh. twice the height. Oh my God. So these will be projected. You'll just see the middle of the tree. Yeah. You can't see the top or the bottom. Right, right. Um, but you'll be able to get a sense of what that scale was and kind of help us remember, mm. you know, what used to be. Mm -hmm. And so that piece is called Illuminated Ghosts. Mm -hmm. And then artist John Romero, who was fishing in Alaska all summer, yep. um, will be back to do a mural piece just down the block. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll be the history of the Duwamish River and a lot, capturing a lot of the um, perspective of Native people in that piece. No, oh, fabulous. Yeah. So, um, so your piece, I know, is, is up already, so you can see that in the mural. We're not quite sure when that's going to be completed, but um, we'll keep you posted yeah. on that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah, uh, for letting you. us in, and uh, what an incredibly cool project that yeah. that is. Um, and that is an, a wrap for us uh, for this week. We want to thank Equinox and, of course, Sam Ferrazano for letting us in. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Very well done, sir. Um, and you want to mark your calendar. Uh, by the way, there's a big thing coming up December 12th. It's your big arty event, and there's stuff going on, right, right? all, all day long. It's our holiday, very open house. And <laughs> it will be um, featuring that thing that Sam was on. It's called the what? The Mighty Schmackamer. The Mighty Schmackamer, and you can make cool stuff. So you want to come down for that. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Wow, and I love this stuff. Hey, this is really cool. Oh, God. Oh, you're not. <laughs> I can't do it. You're not as coordinated I'm, as I thought you are, I'll, should be. I could do handstands. Really? Yeah. Do it. Um, right, can you? Wow! <gasps> Good. Money. You dropped, <laughs> you dropped a quarter. That was the best one ever. Right on. That's and the I, best one I've ever really done in my life. And I got a quarter out of it. Man, I don't think that I got that on That was good. That was